Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for stopping by for our weekly Intel report for the week of April 26th, 2023. If you're watching this as a video after it's been streamed live, leave a comment in the comment section below. We always love to read those. I read everything that you guys send me. In our primary headline for this evening, uh, uh, Biden uh, warns Korea uh, against a nuclear attack on U.S. allies, saying it would result in the end of the North Korean regime. Also, uh, they've announced that they are going to be docking for the first time in, I believe, what I believe is uh, 40 years. Uh, they will be docking nuclear-capable submarines uh, in South Korea. Says President Joe Biden in South Korea's Yoon suk Yeol uh, unveiled a new plan Wednesday to counter North Korea's nuclear threat, with the U.S. leader issuing a blunt warning that such an attack would result in the end of whatever regime took such action. The new nuclear deterrence effort calls for the periodically docking of U.S. nuclear submarines uh, in South Korea for the first time in decades, bolstering training between the two countries and more. The declaration was unveiled as Biden hosted Yoon for a state visit at a moment of heightened anxiety uh, over an increased pace of ballistic missile tests by North Korea. Again, I, uh, I, we've talked a lot about the recent aggressive actions by North Korea. And uh, uh, a lot of those actions um, that we've seen in the recent weeks were uh, in response to the U.S. doing drills in and around South Korea. Um, uh, of course, there's a lot of them that were not uh, retaliatory in nature, so they weren't retaliating for things that the U.S. had been doing um, or or conducting these tests, I, I should say, because of drills that were going on. So there were some events that were related to those drills that were happening. Um, and, and some that were just kind of uh, done on North Korea's uh, own accord. I do believe that after this announcement, we are going to see further tests by North Korea. We're going to definitely see some activity here probably in the next few days, if not next few weeks from North Korea. You could probably expect to see more missile launches, more tests. Um, uh, I, I would I, th I would guarantee that this is uh, not making the regime in North Korea too happy hearing about this news, and I, I would assume that they're going to respond in some way in the coming days. Uh, in our main Ukraine headlines this evening, of course, there's that major uh, talk uh, – uh, between Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and Chinese leader Xi Jinping uh, for the first time, actually, since uh, Russia's invasion began in February of 2022. He said that they had a long and meaningful phone call and that he would send an envoy to Beijing. Uh, President Xi is uh, uh, reported to have said that China, quote, would not sit idly by, nor would it add oil to the fire. The Chinese president also said that, quote, talks and negotiation were the only way the conflict would end. He is going to send a peace delegation to Kiev. Meanwhile, risks of a direct military confrontation between the two nuclear powers, Russia and the United States, are steadily growing. Uh, the TASS news agency quoted a senior Russian diplomat as saying on Tuesday, Vladimir uh, Yermakov, uh, the foreign ministry's head of nuclear nonproliferation, told the Russian state news agency that Washington was escalating the risks through its conduct with Moscow. Meanwhile, uh, we had a report of uh, British fighter jets uh, helped uh, in a joint NATO response to intercept three Russian planes, including two Su-27 fighter jets. It says British and German warplanes have intercepted two Russian jets and a spy plane caught flying without transponder signals over the Baltic Sea. Royal Air Force and German Air Force Typhoon fighters were scrambled together from Amari Air Base in Estonia on Tuesday to identify the military aircraft. This post, coming from uh, the Washington Post, it says, U.S. intelligence holds that Russia will be able to fund the war in Ukraine for at least another year, even under the heavy and increasing weight of unprecedented sanctions, according to leaked U.S. military documents. The documents are part of a trove shared in a Discord chat room and obtained by the Washington Post, again referring to that big intel link. This leak came from that Massachusetts uh, Air uh, National Guardsman uh, technician, Jack uh, Texeria, I'm pretty sure is how you pronounce it name, who was charged this month with taking and transmitting those classified documents. Again, he could be facing up to 15 years in prison.
While some of Russia's economic elites might not agree with the country's course in Ukraine and sanctions have hurt their businesses, they are unlikely to withdraw support from Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin, according to an assessment that appears to date from early March. So that's pretty recent. That's in the last month or two here. It says here, Russia's attack on Ukraine last year kicked off Europe's biggest conflict since World War II, one in which two modern militaries have deployed new weaponry at an, an unprecedented scale. As such, the fighting in Ukraine has introduced the world to new technologies that are uh, upending longstanding military thinking. Perhaps the most notable development is the widespread use of drones. Both sides have employed drones of all sizes and capabilities, both military and commercially designed models, for a variety of operations. Many drones conduct aerial reconnaissance and provide vital information to troops on the ground or relay coordinates for artillery fire. Other drones carry weapons ranging from small grenade and mortar-sized munitions to harass infantry and mechanized forces to missiles and rockets for attacks on vehicles and fortifications or weapons themselves. In some news relating to China this evening, a Chinese invasion of Taiwan would dest uh, destroy world trade and distance uh, would offer no protection to the inevitable catastrophic blow to the global economy. The UK's Foreign Secretary James Cleverly warned in a set-piece speech on Britain's relations uh, with Beijing, urging no side to take unilateral action to change the status quo. He asserted the reverence of Taiwan to UK interests, saying, quote, about half of the world's container ships pass through these vital waters, the Taiwan Strait, every year, laden with goods bound for Europe and the far corners of the world. Taiwan is a thriving democracy and a crucial link in global supply chains, particularly for advanced semiconductors, again, referring to those chip fabs. Quote, a war across the strait would not only be a human tragedy, it would destroy world trade worth $2.6 trillion, according to uh, Nikkei uh, Asia. No country could shield itself from the repercussions. It says here, British Secretary of State uh, for Foreign Commonwealth and Development Affairs, James Cleverly, uh, yesterday w uh, was to urge uh, – China to be more open about the reasons behind what he called the biggest military buildup in peacetime history and said secrecy around its plans could lead to a tragic miscalculation. Relations between Britain and China are at the worst in decades after London restricted Chinese investment over national security concerns and expressed concern at Beijing's increasing military and economic assertiveness. Uh, I think that's about it. I think that about sums up everything for this evening. If I missed anything, guys, send me a message. Um, you can always PM me on Discord. You can always send me an email. I love reading your guys' emails. I read every comment. I read every message that's sent my way. Uh, sometimes I get bombarded with with them, so it takes me a little bit of time to get back to people, so bear with me. Uh, but to everybody that tuned in this evening, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Until next time, you are watching Nemico Network. Let me go.